morning. Why is this a very special morning? Because it's uh, others of our church. And uh, we bless the Lord for all the mothers who are here this morning. We want to honor them. So welcome to our worship service. Early mothers this morning will receive a very beautiful rose from from the church how are you this morning are you blessed praise the Lord but where are the rest of the others St still coming and sleepy but anyway this is a beautiful day God has given us another day to live and so we want to offer our best worship to the Lord this morning so let us all rise up as we extend our Christian greetings. If you see an extra beautiful lady beside you, that's probably a mother. Greet that mother and let us sing our fellowship song. We're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Wherever I am, I'll praise Him wherever I am. I'll praise Him for His love Surrounds me like the sea I'll praise the name of Jesus Lift up the name of Jesus For the name of Jesus lifted me We're together again just praising the Lord, we're together again, in one accord. Something good is going to happen, something good is it so. We're together again, just praising the Lord, wherever I am, wherever I am. I'll praise Him wherever I am. I'll praise Him for His love surrounds me like the sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Let us give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated. rise
Psalm 47, verses 1 and 2, 6 and 7. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a psalm of praise. Let us all praise God and sing for the beauty of the earth. Let us pray. Our Father, our Lord, and our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, revive our spirits, revive our hearts, for you will not contend forever, nor will you always be angry. Forgive us, O Father. Let your light break forth like the morning. We lift our voice to you, Give us the delight to hear your words and know your ways. Take delight as we approach you. Today, we especially thank you for the ministry of motherhood. It is more than a job or a responsibility. The enduring love of mothers reminds us of the depth and height and breadth of your love for each one of us. Truly, blessed are you, Lord, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. be seated. A responsive reading taken from Proverbs 31 verses 10 to 31. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She considers a field and buys it. 
Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. All, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Sunday School takes the best bits of Sunday and of school to create a relaxing space to hear amazing stories and inspiring ideas. Today we're getting closer to Global Outreach Day. It is estimated that more than 15 million Christians will participate. It is the biggest evangelistic mobilization ever and works with one very simple action. Share the gospel with at least one person. And do this knowing that millions of Christians are with you all over the world. There are many ways to share the gospel. Look for one that fits into your culture. You can invite someone for ice cream or get together for coffee while you talk about Jesus and his love. You can gather with your church and friends and go out in teams. You can help the poor, offer someone a ride, pray for the sick, wash a car, do the thing that God has created you to do. Whether you're organizing a large team or inviting someone for coffee, you can make an eternal difference in someone's life. Everyone can reach someone and together we can reach the world. Global Outreach Day.
Good morning once again. I hope all the mothers enjoy our very short uh, presentation for that. So, happy Mother's Day, everyone. If you're seated with an you know, extra beautiful woman today, guess what? That, that ought to be a mother. So, I want you to greet the person next to you, especially the mothers. Happy Ma Mother's Day. And those of us today who, who failed to buy a flower or a gift, okay, praise God, the church has saved us. So we are giving out uh, beautiful flowers, okay, uh, to the mothers. So happy Mother's Day. And uh, I guess all the important information about our activities this month is in the weekly bulletin, so please make sure you bring home a copy of our bulletin. But at uh, this point, I'd like to welcome some special friends, visitors this morning. would like to welcome back to the Philippines, uh, Presi Ann Famashon, the sister of Baby Lou. Hello, welcome back to the Philippines. And we would like also to welcome from Davao City, Mr. Johnny Ang, if he is around. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Bradford Church. We hope that you will consider Bradford Church as your home church here in Cebu City. And to all our visitors and friends who are here, welcome. Welcome to our church. All right, uh, if you notice one video there, I want to highlight that Bradford Church is one of the uh, thousands of churches around the world who will participate in the GOD. You know what is the GOD? Global Outreach Day. And I want you to mark your calendars. It's a red day for all Christians on May 30. Okay, that's May 30, the last Saturday of this month, will be the Global Outreach Day, right? And the goal is to just share the gospel. All members of the church encourage all Christians. And uh, this is so timely for our emphasis this month because we are celebrating missions and evangelism. So, if it is not your habit to share the gospel at least once a year, okay, <laughs> we share the gospel. You bring, you bring a friend, you invite them for coffee. Wherever you go on that day, at least one person, you share the gospel. And uh, we will collect all the names because we will be submitting this to the a Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches and PCEC Philippines will submit this to uh, the World Council of Evangelical Churches and together we will be offering to God millions of soul in this one particular day. So pray for that. Remember, sharing the gospel is a, a spiritual warfare. You know, the devil wants to, you know, to withhold the souls from from hearing the word of God. So, what's the date? It's May 30. Tell the person next to you. May 30, it's the World Outreach Day. We will share the gospel and to at least just one soul. If you can share more, so much the better. All right? And then, uh, there are a number of events in line with our missions and evangelism month, so please take note of that. We have the we have missions marathon Sunday on May 24, and then our BUCI Congress. Let's pray for this May 27 to 29. Of course, uh, Global Outreach Day May 30, and then we have the Mission Sunday on May 31. We have. Uh, Beginning next Sunday, we, we do have several guest preachers. Uh, we have one from MV Logos Hope on uh, May 24. And then we have uh, another speaker on May 31. So uh, praise God that we have several visitors. We are also taking advantage of the MV Logos Hope 
who is here. I won't be preaching next Sunday because uh, I am invited to speak. So, nag exchange pulpit ta sa Logos. There's a a unified worship service in MV Logos, and I was invited to preach there on May 17. So, somebody else will come here to preach uh, for us. I think it's uh, we have a couple next Sunday. We have Dan and and Susie Potter. Not connected with Harry Potter, of course. <laughs> All right, so make sure that you bring home a copy of the bulletin so that you will know the events of our church. At this time, let us continue to worship the Lord as we sing our hymn of preparation. Happy the home when God is there And love fills every breast When one their wish and one their prayer And one their heavenly rest Happy the home where Jesus lay Sweet to every ear, where children early speak his way, and parents hold him there. Happy the home where prayer is heard, and praise is wont to rise. Where love the sacred word and all its wish the Christ Amen Let us now unite our hearts and minds for the congregational prayer Let us bow down our heads in prayer Let us pray Almighty God, our gracious Father, our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer, our ever-present help in trouble, our friend, we want to express, Lord, our thanksgiving to you this morning for gathering us, your people, in your house to express to you our thanksgiving to worship you, to honor you, because you are most worthy of all our praise. Father, we cannot imagine, Lord, where we will be without you, Lord, without your grace, without your love. Thank you so much that you took the initiative to reach out to us, that we are saved today by your grace through faith in Christ because of your love. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for our salvation. Lord, we thank you so much that even though we are sinners and we have fallen short from your glory, thank you so much that you continue to provide us our daily needs. Blessings, Lord, that we don't deserve. So, Lord, you are truly worthy of all our thanksgiving today for the blessings, Lord, and numbered mercies and grace that we have received for the past few days and today. Lord, we, we hope and pray that this morning we can give a beautiful smile on your face, that you, you will accept our songs, you will accept our thanksgiving, our offerings, our lives, Lord. Lord, we humble before you, we acknowledge our sins. Forgive us, O God. We know that we always commit sin. In as much, Lord, as we want to please you and honor you, human as we are, O God, we sin. Help us, Lord. 
Help us to truly repent from all our sins, to be mindful of the, the bad things that we have done, even as those good things that we are supposed to do but we fail doing. Forgive us, O God. Cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Lord, open our hearts and minds this morning to listen to your word, to reflect on it, O God, so that we can be recharged, we can be revived, Lord. For truly, your word is reviving. Your word, Lord, is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. Your word is a guide, Lord, to all of us. Lord, bless our hearts that we can receive your word with, with joy, with eagerness, and, and be quick, Lord God, to respond in obedience. Father, bless your people this morning. As we celebrate Mother's Day in this month of May, Lord, bless all the mothers who are here. We want to appreciate them. We want to thank them, Lord. Though some of our mothers are no longer here, they are already gone to be with you, but Lord, this day is a memorial day for all of them, for their hard work, for their sacrifices, for their endurance, Lord God, so that we would be who we are today. Lord, bless all the mothers. Give them, Lord, the joy. Give them, Lord, the endurance to do the motherhood, Lord God. It's truly a blessing to be a mother. Father in heaven, we commit to you, Lord, your church, the needs of your people, O oh God. We pray for the person on our left and right, in front of us, in our back, O oh God. We pray for them that your grace will abound in their lives, that they will truly know more about you, that they will grow in their faith, so that they can meet all the challenges every day. Pray, O oh God, that you will empower them with your Holy Spirit so that they can be good witnesses of Christ and share Jesus to everyone. Lord, bless them with their needs. Provide them, O oh God. Give them the joy, Lord, in serving you in this church and in the bigger body of Christ around us. Continue to empower the leaders of this church so that we can lead and we can guide and we can give direction, Lord, to the whole membership. Father, we pray for the programs this month, our missions and evangelism. We are emphasizing this very important duty of every one of us, and that is to go and make disciples. Lord, help us to be true to our mission vision that we bring people to you, Lord. We bring our families to you for that is our first duty, O oh God. Lord, we commit to you the ministers and programs of our kids' ministry, their upcoming events, their camp. Thank you so much for the success of the Daily Vacation Bible School. Thank you so much for all those kids who have heard the Bible stories and messages, O oh God. We are praying that they will grow in your grace, O oh God. Father, we, we now pray for the whole nation. We pray for the Philippines. Pray for peace and order. We pray for those, our brethren in the Luzon area, as they are preparing and even battling, Lord, against the forces of nature, the storm. We pray for protection, O oh God. We pray, Father in heaven, that you will save them. We pray that you will give guidance and wisdom to our president as he continue to lead this land. And Lord, we ask that you will grant us a spiritual revival as a nation. That the gospel message, Lord, would be preached in every corner of this land. That come May 30, every one of us will participate in sharing the good news that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. 
that no one can go to you, no one can experience heaven without receiving Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior. And we ask all these things with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Thank you so much, choir. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Thank you for coming this morning. Tell the person next to you, I'm, I'm blessed that you are here. The, the message this morning is about motherhood. And this is still part of our focus on evangelism. Remember that evangelism is the emphasis this month. Can I have my slides now? And I'm trying to mix the, the emphasis on missions and motherhood. All right? Is it, is it possible to talk about missions and then celebrate Mother's Day? Well, why not? That's why the title of our message is this, Be a Mom. Okay, be a mom. What is a mom? Be a mother on mission. Be a mother. Or mom means mothers on mission. And this is not just for the mothers, although the message is taken from the life of a mother, but the principles this morning is for all of us. So if, if you are not a mother, then be a man on mission. <laughs> right? So this includes the fathers and all of us here because we can all be used by God for the missions, all right? Now, what is a mother? Okay, here's a good dictionary. A verb. Bring up a child with care and devotion. But notice as we see the, the noun version of mother. A mother, a teacher, friend, cook, driver, gardener, doctor, carpenter, nurse, Event planner, designer, detective, accountant, nutritionist, caregiver, tutor, wife, counselor, and so on. <laughs> right? And so, never, never say that, you know, what's, what's your job? What's your work? Never say, I am just a mother. Right? Because the moment you say you are a mother, you know, that includes all the other work. Okay? And it's so sad that fathers are giving their wives just enough for one profession. Nga ang atong mga mothers, they are multitaskers, alright? So we want to thank you mothers, those mothers who are here. Kano, husbands, will you please kiss them? Kids, will you please hug your mothers? Appreciate them. <laughs> okay? You know, a Jewish proverb says, God must be where and therefore he made <laughs> mothers now imagine a day when mom is not around right who would do the dish somebody said that you know everybody wants to save the world but nobody wants to help mom in the kitchen <laughs> but the sad thing is this modern women see motherhood as a burden a profession of antiquity a loser's job a curse Okay? It's so sad. If there are women today who think that motherhood is the least kind of work, shame on them. Why? Because the Bible honors what? Motherhood. The Bible honors motherhood. In fact, we have a very long chapter in Proverbs. We, it's part of our responsive reading. And if you look at motherhood there, if you look at the, the, the noble woman, you will be amazed. Is this a woman? <laughs> you know, she buys a property, plants a, a vineyard, makes sure that the husband eats, you know, and the children are taken care of. She wakes up while it's still dark. All right? Now, those of you... Uh, gentlemen, uh, single men, if you want a, the right woman, okay, make sure that Proverbs 31 is your, is your checklist, right? So, ignon yun ignon, samang ka, maka wake up kag sa yun, tag, 
Are you willing to buy a field for me? <laughs> right? Because you know what? It is a curse to marry the wrong wife. <laughs> but it is a blessing. It's truly the greatest blessing to have the right wife, to have the right mother. And you know what? In our emphasis about evangelism, one of the greatest influence of a mother is bring their children to the Lord. Amen? In our emphasis of the bring, remember, there are rocks here in our church. Bring, belong, build, bless. First one is to bring. And in bringing, the first people that we want to bring to the Lord is not our neighbor, it's not those people in the office. The first people that we want to bring to the Lord are those people within the house. That is why evangelism begins at home. That to the person next to you. Evangelism begins at home. It begins at home. The parents, the mothers, and the fathers, they are the first evangelists. Before our kids could ever hear the first verse or the first, you know, a Sunday school song, they first hear it from you and from me. We'll turn your Bibles now to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. This is where we will get our message about motherhood. And in this chapter, we will find a childless woman. Right? Desperately asking for a child, and God grants her that request, and she became a mother, a mother of a famous man, Samuel. And what, what's the name of the woman? Her name is Hannah. And the word, the name Hannah means grace. So if your name is Hannah or some of these derivatives like Anne, Hannah, it's the same as Anne, Annie. Okay, it means grace. Right? Now, the, the, the man version of Hannah is, guess what? It's John. Johan. So, Johan is the male version of Hannah. Johan means God is gracious. Right? So, we know that uh, Hannah was barren according to verse 5 in your text. If you, if you will, look at the verse. In verse 5, it says there that the Lord closed her womb. Okay, and she cried out to God for a baby. And after many years of crying out, she became pregnant and she gave her son the name Samuel. Okay, you know the meaning of Samuel? It means the heard of God, right? Heard of God. Okay, Sam. Sham is from uh, Sham is the Hebrew word for hear. Okay? That is why the Shama, okay, that's where the Jews would say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. That's the Shama. Okay? So, in fact, if your name has some Sham there, Sam, it means heard. So, Samuel is the great, one of the greatest leaders of Israel. Okay? Second to Moses. You know what? Samuel is both a judge. He is the last judge of Israel. He is a prophet. So he represents pe uh, God to people. And he is as well a priest. Right? Unusual for a person to hold three offices. He is a political leader. He is a representative of God. And he is a priest. That's Samuel. And you know, Samuel's story did not start with Samuel. It started with his mother, Hannah. All right? So let's begin in verse 4. So on the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. Now, by the way, Elkanah is a devout man, but probably you would, you would notice that Elkanah had wives. All right, now let me explain this first and foremost. This should not be, you know, an example for Christians to follow. Pastor Os Ilkana Gane. We need to understand that while in the Bible there are examples of people like you know, Abraham, uh, Jacob, okay, 
This is not God's intention and this is not God's command. God's principle for marriage is always this, one wife for life. Okay? Men, say that to your wife. One life or one wife for life. Alright? One wife for life. Now, wh why, why is it, Pastor, that Eliana, you know, is, he's a devout Jew, yet he has two wives? It's the culture. It's not the Word of God, but it's the culture. Remember? They were not yet a nation. They were not yet a big nation. And so, remember, the Jews were nomads. So somehow, they follow the, the culture. That is why Moses taught them the law because the, the dominant culture allows for two wives. Now, one reason that a man can have another wife is this. When the, your wife is unable to give you a child, their culture allows for you to get another wife. That is why, you know, Sarah, Sarah, Rachel, when they were unable to give their husbands a child, they gave their maidservant. Alright? So, probably, the first wife of Elkanah was Hannah. Because Hannah could not bear children, that's why Elkanah took another wife, Penina. Right? But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 5. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Imagine this. You have a rival and your rival is always provoking you. Right? And the Bible says this went on year after year. So therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. No? Now, it's one thing to be, imagine the problem. The Bible says the Lord closed her womb. So it's one thing not to bear a child, but it's another thing for a rival you know, to provoke you, to irritate you, to bully you, to mock you. And so Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? So, nindot po ni si, ko ano? Elkanah, so husbands, inanaon niya yung wife, no? Siya, di ba ko worth dozens of sons? You know? And after they had eaten and drunk in jail, Hannah rose. Now Eli, you know, Eli was the high priest at the time was sitting on the seat beside the door, doorpost of the temple of the Lord. Now, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. So, nag-observe ra si Eli. Okay, here's the first thing that we can learn. Hannah had so many problems. She was provoked by her rival. But instead of giving up, instead, you know, just lashing it over and fighting that wife, no, pwede mo siyang, I'm the legal wife. Diba? Diba? Instead of venting out her emotions, you know what? Hannah brought her emotions to the Lord. And friends, motherhood brings so much problems. Alright? And sometimes, because we have so many pressures, we vent out to our husbands. And we vent it out to our kids. But here's a good Example by this model, Hannah. Hannah vent out all her problems to the Lord. Look at verse 15. Okay? You know what happened? Because Hannah was always crying and, and she, was, she was silent when she was praying. So the priest Eli thought that Hannah was drunk. All right? And so the priest Eli said, You know, woman, stop drinking because that's not good for you. You know, and you know, Hannah says, I am not drunk. I am so dis discouraged and depressed. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Friends, that's the best thing to do. Pour out your problems to the Lord. You know, just vent it out 
to Him. Because He can do more to us than people. And we need to understand that God uses problems to get our attention focused on Him. Right? Now, sometimes, without problems, then we have no reason to go to God. Some people, when they have no problems, well, they become slack in going to church. But suddenly, when problems come, then we find so many people coming to the nailing rails. See? Sometimes, problems are really not evil, but problems are there to draw us closer to the Lord. You know? According to the Bible, Psalm 42, verse 5, Why so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope where? In God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. According to Peter, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Now, fathers and mothers and parents, do you have problematic children? And maybe some wives here, you can sympathize with Hannah. Maybe there is a rival. There is another woman. And you know, it bothers you so much. It hurts you. You don't want to eat. Okay? Follow Hannah. You know, don't vent it out to your husband. It will not work. Vent it out to God. Pour out your problems to the Lord because the Lord is simply waiting for you. Amen? Second thing we can learn from Hannah, the model mother, is this. Not only did Hannah put out her problems to the Lord, Hannah persisted in prayers to the Lord. So this is the principle of prayers. You know, principle of prayers. Friends, our problems should drive us to pray instead of, you know, just being wild and, you know, the outburst of anger. You know, silence yourself in prayers. And so in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. So her prayers, her worship were mixed with tears. No? And the Bible says God is closer to the brokenhearted. And so when we come to the Lord, you're broken in spirit. And when our worship is mixed with the tears of, of sadness and anguish, you know, it shakes the throne of God in heaven. It gets the attention of God. And the Bible says as she kept on praying to the Lord, you know, so the idea here is that she does, this is not just a popcorn prayer, no. You're talking here of a daily, you know. Every time they travel, she would pray, she would just cry out. And Eli noticed that, you know, this woman, it, this is the same woman who came here last year. Right? She's always crying. And the Bible says Eli simply observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. And so Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. And that's when Hannah said, Not so, my Lord. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was, what? Pouring out my soul to the Lord. So Hannah was praying to God. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. That's why the Bible says, pray without sinning. Friends, don't stop praying until God starts working. That was the principle of Hannah. She never stopped begging God until God start to work. Amen? And you know what? Look at verse 18. Notice verse 18. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. You know why? Because she had honestly and openly offered her problems to the Lord 
and she has already expressed to the Lord her depression. And so what happened? You know the, the, the result? Her countenance became good. And that is one of the antidote to depression. Cry it out to God. And the Bible says, what happened? Suddenly, her face became okay and she started to eat. Right? She started to eat. Everything went well. Why? Because she already told God about her needs. So here's a principle. Tell God how you really feel and leave your problems with Him. Amen? Tell God. Okay? Don't use alcohol. Okay? Usay, natay problema. Atong atubangon si San Miguel. Oh, di ba? Lain man nga mga santos. Okay? Just open yourself to God. That's what Hannah did. And you know what? Her prayers were answered. Okay? One of her requests is that the next verse, verse 11. Okay, and here's the third principle. Hannah presented her plans to the Lord. Okay, Hannah did something that is so radical. Okay, what did she do? She made a vow. And this is her prayer, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then look at this. I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. See, Hannah had the right plan for her son. Even without paniabot iyang anak, no? Even if the child wasn't, wasn't there, she already presented her plans to the Lord. Okay? Now, let's, let's draw some principles here. Okay? God's plans for our children are more important than our own plans. I'm sure you want plans for your children. You know, you want them to, to study in, you know, prestigious universities. Okay? And by the way, if you're considering, if, if you have children uh, six years old and high school, Please consider Cebu Bradford School, where we train your children like Hannah trained Samuel. Okay? What is your desire? No? What are your plans for your children? I'm sure we have so many plans, but listen from Hannah. Hannah's prayer is not that Samuel will be a good businessman. Hannah's prayer was not that Samuel will become a doctor and, you know, get rich, you know, buy a car, build mansion so that live. No. You know what is the plan of Hannah for her child? Her plan is that her child will... Sorry. Some of us think that serving the Lord is the least Thing that we can offer to our children but we are wrong nothing can be greater than serving the Lord fashion more you know more glorious than God is your own employer see Hannah could have made so many plans for Samuel you know preparing her to become you know, or to, to become the next king or the first king. No, that's, that was not her plan for Samuel. Her plan for Samuel is that Samuel would serve the Lord. And here we find the principle of a mother on mission. Even if Samuel wasn't yet, Hannah already presented him. Now, how many of us here presented our children to the Lord? How many of us here dedicated our children to the Lord? You see, we have godly desires for our children, but question, are our desires for our children God-honoring? Because sometimes, even Christians fall to the trap of materialism. We just want our children to land in you know, good universities so that they become rich, so that they, you know, they can earn their way. And serving the Lord will just be part or one of them. Wrong! 
Because it doesn't profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Parents, listen. You may not have the millions to, to send your children to prestigious universities and you think it's a failure. Listen, your greatest, your greatest success is when your children come to know the Lord and serve Him. If you have done that, you are an excellent parent already in the eyes of God. Because God will not give you a plaque of appreciation if you've sent your children. You know, I'm not saying it's wrong, but you will not receive a plaque of appreciation for, you know, making your children a doctor, an engineer, a good businessman or woman. You will not. But you will certainly receive an appreciation from God if your children serve God. Because that's the greatest thing our children can do for the Lord. It's when they serve the Lord. We need to raise our children as disciples of God. That was the priority of Hannah. You know? And kita, kita mga, naghan mga kita dreams, di ba? You know, some of our dreams are our own frustrations because what takabalik dag ko, ah, son, build mama and build papa a big house. Diba? Ang atong mga frustrations, atong i-pour i out sa atong mga anak. You know, you know, I have, wala ko na doktor na, na pastor naman ko, ikaw na lang yung mag-doktor. Okay? And by the way, uh, Hannah's prayer, you know, this is something very close to me because I like to share something, no? When Sharon was was uh, pregnant with Josh, okay, during that time, there was I met so many people having uh, kanang mga kuan ba, special children, and there was that fear already with me, right? There was that fear, and I've been praying to the Lord, you know, and I made you know, I made that prayer, Lord, please give me a healthy young boy, healthy Lord. And he is going to serve you. He is going to serve you. I made this prayer of Hannah. And praise God. Okay. Josh was born on a Sunday. Okay. I just left Sharon there in the hospital and then came here because I, I, I preach here. And then after the sermon, went back and, okay, Nanay Tabikui texted me. It's a boy. No? And I said, your name should be Josham. You know why Josham? You know the meaning of Josham? It's Jehovah heard. Sham, remember Sham? Heard. Gibalila na ko, wala ko gi Shamuel. Okay, komo naman kay so Josham, it means Jehovah heard. And Nathan, oh Josh has a second name, it's Nathan. You know the meaning of Nathan? Given by God. So Josh, every time I see Josh and every time Josh is sick, it reminds me, it, God is always reminding me, Maki, you dedicated your son. I will fulfill that, fulfill yours. So it's always reminding me that I need to dedicate life to the, my life to the Lord. Because Josham is a sign that he is an answer to my prayer and that he is given to God to us. That's why his name is Nathan, given, heard and given. Now friends, if, if you are still single, it's not too early to pray for your Samuel. Because when Hannah was praying for Samuel, when Hannah was praying, Samuel wasn't there yet, but in the mind of Hannah, Hannah was already prioritizing God. This son will serve the Lord. Amen? Our desire for our children should that that they should walk. Now, what are your plans? Your now, here's here's good plan for our children. Follow this. I, I find this so wonderful. Third John one four, and look at what John says. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Wow. That's that ought to be our desire, parents, mothers. Don't just train your children to be the next doctor or nurse or engineer. Those are good. But before that, train them to walk in the Lord. Because that is our mission. Amen? Amen. That is our mission. 
And probably, you know, in your whole Christian life, you have not shared the gospel to anyone. But it's okay if you have shared the gospel to your own children. Be the Hannah to your Samuel. And it's not too early to pray. And it's not too late to pray. Now, if you have children now, they are grown, and you think, Pastor, it's too late. You know, they have their own life. No, there's not, no such thing as too late for God. God answers a persistent mother. Hello. Those of you mothers, if you, you're, you feel discouraged because, you know, your children, they are not worshiping the Lord. They are not going with you. You know, before, you came along to Sunday school, and now they are old. They are not worshiping with you. It is not yet too late. Pray for them. Kneel before God every night that, Lord, may my, may my son or my daughter marry a Christian. Lord, send someone, send a friend to bring my child to you. I don't care if, if my child will not worship with me here at Bradford Church. Lord, send him to a church that teaches your word. Don't stop praying. Present your plans to the Lord. Parents, bring your children to the Lord. That is the heartbeat of our church. Bringing people to the Lord. Bring them to the Lord. Fourth and final principle. Hannah not only poured out her problems, not only persisted in her prayers and presented her plans even before the child was there. Most importantly, Hannah prepared her son for God's purpose. You know, to make the long story short, Hannah conceived, right? So, Nana ang bata, and you know, every year they go back to Shiloh to, to, to offer their thanksgiving. When her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, here's something Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, You know, I'll go after the boy is weaned. I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Okay? And the husband seemed, you know, supportive. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanah said. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman, take note of this, the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Okay? Listen, parents, mothers, don't let anyone substitute your motherhood. You know, a lot of women today, because, because of physical reasons, you know, they don't want to be fat, they don't want to be loose young, you know, they'd rather have someone nurse their children. Okay? Here's what Hannah did. She would never dare substitute her motherhood with anyone. Even a moment of... She, Hannah treasured every moment of the growing up years of her son. And it was during this time that Hannah poured out everything that she knows about God to Samuel. Everything. Day after day. So Hannah saw the first smile, the first word, the first tooth. Every first of her child was what? Observed by Hannah. She was there. So ladies, you know, those of you, you know, younger women and still about to be married, never, never substitute your motherhood simply because you want to good, look good and, you know, you don't want to become loose young. Because the greatest gift that you have is this, for you to nurture your child through your arms, through your hugs, through your kisses. That every single success of the child, you are the witness. Diba? There's a video given on Facebook you know, in Singapore. You know, have you seen that? A study, the interview between the mother and the yaya. Have you seen that? Okay, Sharon, can you please send that to all the members here? There was this study in Singapore, okay? This is not done by a religious organization. This is educational. They found out that the yayas know more personally about their children than their mothers. 
So ang question la is, kin say crush sa imong anak? Ang mama ningon nga wa siya crush and then the yaya mentioned the crush and there were yayas there several of them were Filipinos. All right? Now, unsa may result of that of that you know, study that you know, career women spend less and less time with their son and it's affecting their children. And Hannah chose not to do that. You know? There was personal motherhood there. Amen? And look at this. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live. I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I am that woman that you mistook of a drunkard. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now, okay? I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord and he worship the Lord there. Look, notice this. It's added to that verse. And he, that Samuel, worship the Lord there. Now, why do you think Samuel had that immediate impulse of worshiping the Lord? You know why? Because her mother, you know, his mother, Hannah, influence her made a good impression in his life listen fathers has influence on a child but the deepest impression is made by a godly mother a godly mother so mothers you're not just a mother you're a magnificent person the bible honors you fathers we make it but the deepest impression on the children are the mothers. That is why one application of this, men, okay? Can I see the hands of single men here? Dare not marry an unbeliever. Because if you marry an unbelieving wife, who's going to nurture your children? It pays, you know, it's a reward if you marry someone who is already a believer of the Lord. You are confident because, of course, men, we, we work, right? Our wives, the mothers, spend more time. But if, if you marry a believer, if you marry someone who is godly, who is God-fearing, you are confident that even if you are working there, you know that your children will be raised in the values of God. Pray for a godly woman. Pray for a godly woman. Mothers, if you have sons, pray that your son will be given Christian, God-fearing wives. So that like Hannah, they can make a good impression, deep impression on the lives of these children. And you know what, friends? Some of us here today, are results of a prayerful, godly mothers. Amen? We are now worshiping the Lord. We are now passing on the legacy of faith. Where did we find this? In our grandparents, in our own mothers. We see them wake up early, pray, teach us the Bible stories. And it's paying off. Amen? So mothers, don't just call yourself just a mother. I am a mother a godly mother and you know what you know i'm so blessed with this you think hannah you know lose a son kasad anak pastor no nangayo siya niya nawa na look at this and the lord was gracious to hannah she gave birth to three sons and two daughters wow you can never outgive god you think that when you give god everything you have nothing no it's a test of faith give god your best and you know what? God will replenish you with the rest. Amen? Hannah prepared 
Samuel to serve the Lord. And who is Samuel? He became one of the greatest leaders of Israel. He was the, the prophet, the priest, who anointed Saul, the first king, David. Amen? Friends, who knows that you are you know, nurturing and mothering the next president of the Philippines, the next pastor of BUCCI, the next missionary. We do not know. Never underestimate your potential to parent, to mother a child for the Lord. Amen? And the Bible says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. So friends, Okay, whether you're a mother, a father, this is our mission. Amen? Let's read this together. Bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. That is our greatest mission as parents, to bring them up in the Lord. Now, let me close with this little parable for the mothers. Okay, can you still listen to this? A young mother set her foot on the path of life. And she asks her guide, is the way long, the motherhood long? And you know, the guide said, you will be old before you reach the end of it. But the end, listen to this, but the end will be better than the beginning. So the young mother was happy and she would not believe that anything could be better than her younger years as a mother. So she played with her children, you know, make sure that they enjoy, bathe them, share stories about them. And then at night, she said, nothing could be so good than this, you know. What else could be so wonderful than sharing stories, playing with your kids? Then the night came and then there was a storm and the path was dark. And the children shook with fear and cold and the mother drew them close and covered them with her arms and the children says oh mother we are not afraid for you are near and no harm can come and the mother thought this is better than yesterday or this morning for i have taught my children courage and the morning came, and there was a hill ahead, and the children climbed and grew weary. But at all times, she was there with her children. A little patience, and we are there, said the mother. So the children climbed, and they reached the top of the mountain. And the, the children said, we could not have done this, mother, without you. And the mother, when she lay down that night, looked up to the nurse and said, now this is better yesterday because I taught my children fortitude to face hardships in life. Yesterday, yesterday I gave them courage. Today, I gave them strength. And the next day, strange clouds which darkened the earth, clouds of war and hate and evil. And the children groped and stumbled. And mother said, look up, child. Look to the Lord. Jesus is our Savior. And the children looked and saw above the clouds the everlasting glory of God. And it guided them as the children grew. And then the mother said again, This is the best day of all, for I have shown my children God. And the days went on, and the weeks and months and years, and the mother grew old, and she was still little and bent. But her children were strong and tall and walked with courage. And when the way was hard, they helped their mother. And when the way was rough, they lifted her, for she was light as a feather. And at last they came to a hill, and a golden gate flung wide. And the mother said, I have reached the end of my journey. And now I know that the end is truly better than the beginning for my children can now walk alone and they are now teaching their children to follow god truly the ending is better than the beginning and you know the children said mother we thank you so much it's time for you to go you are more than a memory for us you are 
a legacy to live. God bless all the mothers here this morning. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that through our mothers you have given us a glimpse of yourself, how you care for your children, how you are willing to, to sacrifice your own joy just for us to enjoy life. Lord, bless all the mothers who are here. Lord, we want to thank you for them. Lord, some of our mothers have already gone home with you, and we can simply reflect on the wonderful legacies they have made. Lord, thank you for them. May the legacy of faith that our mothers have brought us also enable us, Lord God, to do the same to our children. And Lord, the ministry of bringing our children to you is not just the work of the mothers. They are the work of every parent, Lord. So Father, we bless you for all the mothers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Two Corinthians eight verse nine For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Let us now present our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to the Lord.
us pray. Our Heavenly Father, creator of all things and to whom all things belong, we honor you with these your possessions. Behold, let your guidance be with us continually to please you and commit to your ways. You are the everlasting Lord, the first and the last, the creator of the ends of the earth. To you be all the glory, power, and majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all be seated for the installation of newly elected officers. As announced and printed in the bulletin, uh, two Sundays, for the last two Sundays, Today, we will be formally installing into office our new financial secretary and a new deacon. So I'd like to call them Financial Secretary Antonio B. Florendo. And our new deacon, Deacon Juwaden Guelos Lucero. May I request all the elders who are here to please also come. Our beloved in the Lord, we are gathered here in this induction ceremony to formally put into office these two officers of the church elected by the congregation, chosen by the board of trustees. Let us remember that the Bible tells us that there are different gifts. It is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. And God works through different men in different ways but it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all each one is given a gift by the Spirit to use it for the common good together we are the body of Christ individually members of him ladies and gentlemen we are now about to receive as formal financial secretary and deacon this who have been chosen let us remember that in serving the lord we serve the lord not lording over others but we serve with a servant spirit because jesus said whoever among you wants to be great must become the servant of all and if he wants to be first among you he must be the slave of all men just as the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life to set others free. God has called you by the voice of the church to serve Jesus Christ in a special way. You know who we are and what we believe as a church. And so you understand the work for which you have been chosen. And so do you, financial secretary and deacon, do you trust that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? Do you believe that He is the true head of this church? And through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, we belong to His body. Do you believe? Do you ac accept the Holy Scripture, the Bible of the Old and the New Testament, to be the Word of God, the unique and the main authority in this church? Will you, as leaders of this church, serve in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of the Scripture and the authority of our own uh, bylaws? Will you follow it with a servant heart? Now, do you, members of this congregation, support and pray and submit to these two leaders added to our board of trustees? with all your heart 
and with all your prayers. And if you do, then please stand. Now we would like to ask Deacons Florendo and Lucero to please kneel down. And then the elders to lay their hands. Let us now pray. Almighty God, bless these servants whom you have set apart in obedience to your call and to your will for the work as financial secretary and deacons, respectively, in this church. Grant unto them your grace through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that they may do their tasks in accordance with your will and in the power of your Holy Spirit, in humility and with a servant's heart. We now lay our hands on them to ordain them into office as financial secretary and deacon. And we ask that all your blessings will be upon them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and face the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we would like to present to you Financial Secretary Antonio Florendo and Deacon Joaden Lucero, now fully inducted into office for God's glory and honor. Let's give the Lord a, a clap offering. Let's remain standing for our last song. in prayer father in heaven we thank you so much lord for the message that you have given to all of us this morning and this is not just for all the mothers
but for all of us that we all have a mission to fulfill and our primary mission is to bring our homes to bring our families our children to Jesus Christ and father help us Lord to use our influence to use our status as fathers mothers that we will truly bring our children even our great-grandchildren to you Lord that they may worship you and walk with you for truly that is the greatest reward that we will ever have when we see and when we hear that our children and grandchildren are walking in your truth Lord once again bless all the mothers with their faith Lord give them more strength to endure give them Lord more patience amidst all the challenges of motherhood for we know Lord God that if we continue to pray for our children it will yield the fruit of a transformed and yielded life to you thank you Lord for all our mothers we now pray for this your children who are kneeling bringing to you Lord their Thanksgiving as well as their earnest prayers and requests bless them Lord give them a double portion of your grace that they will receive what they have asked for according to your will and now as we go out from this gathered fellowship the love of our Lord Jesus Christ the grace of our Heavenly Father and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore amen mm -hmm.